So this is like older stuff, which would be really interesting because I'm older than a lot of people that I know. Um, so the first question is, name an old school song, whether it be hip hop, R&B, funk, soul or rock that you'd listen to when you were younger. Um, probably the song that sticks in my mind the most from probably my teen years is uh, Mr. Bad Guy by Freddie Mercury from his solo album. Um, I played that absolutely to death in high school um, and particularly in year 11, um, at the end of year 11, which was when Freddie died. Um, I I absolutely love that album. And I'm, a lot of people I know who really like Queen don't even know that there was a solo album, um, and I've been, I know someone who actually has the solo album, and I need to get a copy of it, because I, I absolutely loved that, some of the songs on that, but Mr. Gut Bad Guy in particular was one that like really stuck in my head, um, I think about it a lot, <laughs> all these years later, um, yeah, so that would, I was very much into, um, Queen and, uh, Led Zeppelin and stuff particularly in high school, um, and um, Eric Clapton, so like blues music, um, and 80s, 70s, 80s rock type stuff. Question two, have you ever attended um, a frying, a block, or a house party? Uh, no, um, I don't think I've ever been to it. I mean, I've been to parties but not like fry ups or um block parties block parties are not really a thing in australia um occasionally they happen but not very often um certainly not where i've ever lived <laughs> and uh i i couldn't say that i'd ever been to a house party no. uh number three have you ever owned a cassette player walkman or record player yes all three. Um, I had, um, we had a record player in the house. Um, my mum likes listening to records. I like listening to records. One of my favourite records was actually um, uh, Robin Hood, the animated one with the, was he a tiger as, or a lion as King Richard and um, a fox as Robin Hood, um, and uh, my mum used to listen to like Peter Paul and Mary and Demis Roussos, um, Nana Muscuri, that kind of stuff. Um, my dad had um, War of the Worlds, the original War of, War of the Worlds recording on record, with all the original artwork and everything, which got destroyed because somebody was a fucking idiot. Um, I quite like records, I think they're kind of cool. Um, and we had, I had a, um, a Walkman. I don't know that it was a Walkman brand, but it was the same thing, a cassette player that was portable with headphones. Um, and I had a tape deck, uh, like a cassette player, and it was, um, grey, it was only a single cassette one, I later on I got a double one which was even cooler because then you could like take from one to the other, but on this one I used to, it had like a radio on it as well, so you'd, you'd get the radio playing and then you'd record like the song onto the tape so that you could listen to it whenever you like and you'd always end up with bits of 
the DJ talking, or he'd start talking at the wrong time in the song, and you get like really shitty at him because he's just like ruined the end of the song which you're trying to record. So I used to try to record um, a Top 40, which was like a radio show that was on every Saturday, I think it was, um, where they go through like the Top 40 songs and just play them one after the other. So you try to record like the whole song then. Um, and then later on I got a Discman, like years and years later I had like a Discman, which was like the upgraded version. When, but I bought cassette tapes a lot. Like I had heaps of them. I found the change to uh, CDs really difficult because <laughs> I really liked my cassette tapes and I I had a lot of them. But uh, discs last better than tapes do. A number of times you have to wind a tape back on because you've like chewed it up. Um, that's literally what happened to my recording of um, Freddie Mercury's Mr. Bad Guy, where it got played so much I broke the tape which is why I don't have any more. And I had actually um, copied that off of the school's version of it, which I basically uh, borrowed for about six months. <laughs> Just kept on going back and re-borrowing it. So, uh, yeah. uh, number four, what was your favorite corner store snack or candy as a child? Uh, Many, many moons ago, when I was quite young, uh, we used to live basically next door to a deli, uh, which is, you know, like a corner store, um, our version of a corner store. And they used to have these, um, uh, they're like lollipops, but they're, um, they're wrapped around a stick or sometimes they're in like a big circle. I'm sure you know the ones I'm talking about. They used to have those, and um, we had a, well, my my mum and my stepfather had a um, had an account with the corner store, and uh, I can remember my brothers and I going in there and buying like ourselves a whole bunch of lollies and putting them on the account, <laughs> and then going home and hiding all of these candies on a stick. Um, which, funnily enough, we got bought for Christmas, this was around about Christmas, but uh, when the account came in, <laughs> shit hit the fan, good and proper, because the bill was massive, <laughs> because of us buying these um, candies. So I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for those candies, I don't know why, because I don't eat them anymore, I haven't for years. Um, but that's one of those like fond memories of, you know, it was a particularly, not a particularly pleasant time in life. Um, so I try to hold on to fond memory stuff and that is one of them, of, um, yeah, those particular candies. Uh, number five, what was your high school mascot? Uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't have one. Mascots is not really a huge thing here in Australia. Um, it is, you know, for things like football and rugby and stuff like that, but not really in schools so much. Um, cause I, I can honestly say I never remember ever having a mascot or like any kind of uh, animal um, or creature related to our school at all. Um, I don't know if it's changed now, but it certainly never was in my day. Um, number six, name a show or shows you could not go without watching as a child. Um, my television viewing as a child was severely limited by my mother. Um, she did not believe that we needed to be watching television any more than was absolutely necessary. So um, I didn't watch a lot of the same kind of television shows that my friends were watching. Um, it's not like I could come home from school in the afternoon and plonk down in front of the television um, and watch like afternoon cartoons and stuff like that. Um, so whilst I enjoyed things like the Bugs Bunny show and stuff, it wasn't something I got to see very often. Um, same with things like um, Sesame Street, even though I have a very soft spot in my heart for Sesame Street, wasn't something I really got to see very often unless I was sick. If you were sick, you get to you got to be in the front lounge room on the lounge with like 
snacks and you could watch television all day long. It was the only time that ever actually happened. So the only time the television went on was when my dad would go home from work um, and then he would turn the television on and it was usually, you know, the news. Um, so the one show that I can remember watching on, well, actually a couple of shows I can remember watching on a regular basis were um, The Muppet Show. I love The Muppets, by the way, so I used to love watching that. Um, that was kind of like one of those weekend night type things where everybody would sit down and watch The Muppet Show and all the different acts that were on. Um, and the other one was a show which is an Australian show, which doesn't exist anymore. And it was called The Young Talent Time, um, and it was started by a guy called Johnny Young, and he had a talent school. And he had this television show, and Kylie Minogue and Danny Minogue both came through this talent school. Um, and Danny was on Young Talent Time for like a really long time. And there's a few other people who went on to become pretty famous in Australian terms, at least, um, who came through the whole Young Talent Time stream sort of thing. Um, yeah, so that was one that we watched pretty much every weekend, and the only other one would probably be Hey Hey It's Saturday, which was, again, an Australian variety type of show. Uh, it started out as a kid's show in the morning, and then it moved on to, like, Saturday nights, um, and became a little more adult in its content. <laughs> um, but they used to have bands on, and they, um, had, like, skits and, uh, lots of funny stuff going on, and the... A puppet called Ozzy Ostrich, which was great. Um, <laughs> um, a guy called Red Simons, who came from a band called the Skyhooks, um, and he would, uh, him and one of his mates, they like had like a band. You know, like you see in American, like late night television shows, they got like the band on the side. It was that kind of setup, but it was done earlier in the day. It was very much family orientated. Um, and yeah, it was just really good fun and just, it was one of those things that you'd like watch every weekend just to see what happens. And they'd have like a, a talent portion where random people would come in and do their, um, their acts. And some of those acts went on to become quite famous, um, over the years. So yeah, um, something that I quite enjoyed um but yeah as they were kind of anything that was on like a weekend is more the kind of stuff that I got to see more than anything that was on sort of like during the week um the only other television I really remember is motor racing because my dad was into motor racing and so like if there was motor racing on the television was on or cricket um if there was a test match on then that would be on the television, or a one day it would be on the television, so, yeah. Uh, number seven, have you ever used a pay phone? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, 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 uh, definitely. Um, I come from the time when um, you were basically required by your parent to carry change on you in order to be able to make a phone call from a payphone because reverse charging from the payphone was bloody expensive and um, people did not appreciate you doing that on a regular basis. Uh, so we used to have like uh, be encouraged to make sure you carried, it used to be 20 cents, like you know, carry your 20 cents with you and then it became like 50 cents. Um, yeah. So I have used a payphone. I use, I mean, there are still payphones around, um, uh, in Australia. Um, and I probably haven't used one for 10 years or more, but yeah, I, I fondly remember using payphones. Used them quite a bit back in the day. Um, number eight, what games or Activities did you play with your neighborhood friends or cousins as a child? Well, number one, I don't know any of my cousins well enough to have played any games with them. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I wasn't 
the most social of uh, children. Um, when I was kind of younger, like really young, before my parents divorced, um, we used to play cricket in the street with the kids from up the road until the dads had an argument and then we weren't allowed to talk to each other anymore. Um, but yeah, uh, cricket was one of those things we used to play a lot, or um, skateboarding down the road, um, which was not necessarily a safe thing to be doing, because uh, the road we lived on was like, was kind of like steep like that, and there was another road that came down at the bottom end of it, like that, and that road was quite a bit busier than our road, because ours was like a dead end, so there wasn't really much going on. Um, and there was a drain almost directly opposite the end of the street. So you'd go flying down the road, like lying on the skateboard. Like, you didn't stand on the skateboard. You lay down or sat on the skateboard. And you go flying through this intersection and basically hit the drain on the other side. You have to be really careful that you didn't slide into the drain. Because it was one of those like big ones. You know, the kind that it stands inside. It was, <laughs> it's like that. There was a few of those. Um, yeah, so we used to play cricket mainly. Um, that was the main thing. Um, and yeah, as you know, a bit of playing um, like dolls with other girls, um, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I wasn't, um, I tended to have more male friends than female friends, and there was a bit of, you know, doctors and nurses stuff going on. But uh, yeah, I, I wasn't, I didn't socialize particularly with a lot of other kids um, most of the time. Uh, number nine, who was your childhood best friend? Um, well, there was actually a couple of them. When I was when I started school, there was a girl called Emma Stafford who was like my best bud. Should have done the road from me. Um, she had a very different type of lifestyle um, than what I had. Um, her parents were kind of like moneyed, and they used to buy her lots of stuff all the time, um, and. I kind of like, no, it's not that my parents didn't buy us stuff, that's not what I'm saying, they just, my mum was on a very, very strict budget, and she had to stick to that budget, she didn't have much choice, and so like at Easter time, we would get this one sugar egg, and the reason we got a sugar egg, which is like, um, they're like hard candy eggs, is because my brother, oldest brother wasn't supposed to be eating chocolate. So mum didn't think it was fair that we get chocolate and he not get chocolate. So we all got the same sugar candy egg things that were like really nicely decorated and I could take ages to eat one of these things because they're like rock hard. Um, kind of like those message candies, that kind of thing. Um, and I went down to her place one of her one of these Easters and she had so much chocolate in her room. Like unbelievable amount of chocolate and I was just like oh my god and you know they had a swimming pool and this kind of stuff but we were like best buds we used to like hang out together heaps um and then oh, we used to get in trouble together at school although she always got in more trouble than I did kind of story of my life really um, <laughs> um and then uh I think her parents broke up or something um and like my parents broke up and we kind of like lost track of each other I did kind of cross paths with her again when I was a teenager, um, but I don't think she remembered me. And it was really random too because it was like at a swimming meet. But my other best friend, um, some of you have heard me talk about her, was Sophie. We met in, I think it was the start of high school, end of primary school, start of high school. Uh, we met at a at the swimming pool actually. I was doing backflips into the swimming pool and she wanted to know how to do it. So I taught her how I had taught myself how to do backflips into the swimming pool. And uh, yeah, we were friends from then on. Um, turned out that both of our parental units things were um, in the same trees for life, or men of the trees, or whatever the hell it was. Um, and yeah, we kind of like the families sort of formed a bit of a bond. Um, we spent a lot of time with them and she's like Sophie and I spent a lot of time together um, she was basically the sister I never had um, 
And of course she passed away seven, eight years ago now. Um, the the date that we got married, the 3rd of November, is actually her birthday. So she it would have been her 44th birthday, um, which is why we picked that date. Because um, Ad- my partner Adrian knew her as well um, for a period of time. We lived together a couple of times. Um, to hang out in the city together. We were actually together the night that I met Adrian. I was actually out with Sophie um, that night. She just had a very different way of dealing with her childhood trauma to my way of dealing with my childhood trauma. Um, hers was to get drunk and um, wasted on drugs. And mine was to go and seek therapy and yeah, so we kind of like diverged, but we were always friends and like we wouldn't talk to each other for like six months because we were both busy and then it would be like nothing had ever happened and we were like best buds again. Um, yeah, and you know, it was, that was, it's one of those friendships that you never forget because they played such an important part in your life. They were part of your life for such a long time um, and at such a formative time as well. So we did a lot of growing up together, that's for sure. Um, and <laughs> the last one is show a throwback picture of yourself. So <laughs> I'm going to insert some pictures of me um, sort of, uh, through the years. Um, I have a few on my um, computer, not a, not a whole lot, but um, I will insert some pictures of me when I was younger. You will see what my natural hair colour is, um, which might be a bit of a surprise to some of you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So- school tag I'm not going to tag anybody if you haven't done this uh, and you want to do it um, I'd love to hear your answers so let me know down below that you've done it or not uh, if you want to subscribe click the button down there click the bell if you want to get notified of when I upload new content leave me a thumbs up if you like tag videos and leave me a comment down below I try to respond to all comments and I'll see you in my next video see ya